One of the things I wanted to talk about today was self-help books. And I never was really into self-help books. I always thought that, oh, this was, that was kind of stupid. If I need that, then I'm not, then there must be something wrong with me. That was kind of my certain thought when I was younger. Hi, this is Dr. Philip Young. We're Aesthetic Facial Body Plastic Surgery and the Beauty Docs on YouTube. If you enjoyed watching this, click the like button below. So this Snapchat story is about self-help books and what I've learned in the past few years. I Basically, it all started when I went to a meeting in Chicago and my good friend Richard Castellano, who's in Tampa, uh, who also started the Image Lift, told me, hey Phil, you gotta go to this talk on mindfulness. And I thought, mindfulness? That sounds really kind of dumb. I mean, honestly, that's what I was thinking. And so I went there because he's my friend. But actually, I learned some really fascinating things that day that really, I think, changed my life. From that talk, I learned about mindfulness. I learned about this book called Happiness that I just think is the most amazing book. And, you know, they talk about living now, not living in the past, letting your negative uh, emotions or negative um, past history affect your your future growth and uh, so I went on this route or this path where I started learning about more about self-help books I think during the time I was uh, going through a lot of, going through a lot of challenging things just starting my practice and the and the uh, stressors of being a plastic surgeon and during that talk in Chicago on mindfulness I learned that plastic surgery was being a plastic surgeon was like top three in the most stressful types of jobs among those including a wartime general and a commercial airline pilot so that brought into you know a perspective to my life on on what kind of stress I was experiencing uh, and so I got into this book called happiness and I literally read that book in about four or five days I was actually in Cabo San Lucas with my family and I literally woke up every morning about 4 or 4 30 in the morning and I just read this book in the you know in the lobby and it it's it, it's just a really beautiful book I mean some of the stories just brought tears to my eyes and good tears like like really a different kind of feeling there's a point when I was reading that book that I was able to feel the same feelings that when you go to church and you sing a, a hymn song and you have that spiritual good feeling about things I think there's a way that you can actually conjure that up on a whim and I actually practiced it basically I think what helped me was having a, a song that was was inspiring and being able to, to remember that song like for example I was waiting in the sushi line one day and I totally remember this time I was looking back at this lady she was a pleasant lady but I was able to have such good thoughts about her you know as a person and I was able to think of that song and I was able to conjure that just out of, out of, out of whim that feeling when you go to church and you and you and you feel really good when you sing that song so hopefully through this you can you can cultivate be able to cultivate happiness more I'm still learning how to do that but hopefully I can I can start doing this more and more as I practice it takes they say that it takes 28 times for you to learn a new habit so you got to keep practicing so I think one of the points that I wanted to talk about it's kind of a funny uh, uh, moment in my life as well. There was a point where I was reading Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Happiness, Emotional Intelligence by Matt, by um, Daniel Goleman, that I started to understand a little bit about myself, and I'm still trying to understand it. I'm, I'm 46, so I, I, I hope that I, I, I catch on pretty soon. But one thing I realized after reading these self-help books is that you can't really incorporate the things that they're trying to teach you unless you are able to identify your emotions. I think it all starts there, and that's one thing I've learned. I think that's one of the most important things that I've learned about reading self-help books and trying to incorporate that in your life. Because if you can't identify your emotions, you won't be able to change and bring into those things 
to be able to change and bring those self-help um, topics and tips and ways to to help yourself without identifying your emotions. So I was, you know, during my life, I was I was uh, trying to incorporate some of the thing, some of these things as I, I still am trying to do today. And I remember this argument I had with someone very close to me, and this person was very upset. You know, could have been a worker in my family, but this person was really upset, and I wanted to try to incorporate the the uh, ability to identify your emotions. So I said, you know, I know you're upset, and one thing I've learned is that, and I want you to practice it with me right now, you're really upset and I want you to try to identify where the anger is coming from, like in your body. Like, is it coming from your heart here? Is it coming from your brain? Where do you feel it? Where are the physical parts of this anger? And because some of these self-help books, especially emotional intelligence and identifying your emotions, and from there being able to work together better, um, I think that's central. So I was trying to help this person do that same thing. And apparently if you're able to identify these emotions and the physical processes that occur, you're able to realize and consciously um, on your concrete side of your brain, being able to know that it's just a physical process and that you can control it and identify it and then thus move on from that particular situation to, to find better solutions, you know, in that argument or whatever situation you're in. So I was telling my, this person that I was arguing with, you know, try to find your emotions and she, she was so mad and she couldn't really get what I was saying. She goes, I know where it's coming from. It's coming from you. And I just about died. It was just so funny. Um, anyways, that was just a, a little uh, story that I had. And um, anyway, I think that, you know, a key to uh, all these self-help books is first you got to identify your emotions in order to be able to move on to really figure out how you're uh, interacting in that moment, whatever your emotions are, and be able to better find some better option or solution for that particular problem. So related to these self, self-help books, what I want to do now is bring up some of the seven tips also related to this to help you better improve your life through self-help books. And, and uh, it's based on Blinklist, a Berlin-based startup company, which went over all these self-help books to find out some of the seven key factors that can allow you to, uh, to better help yourself and improve your life. And some of the seven basic principles that they found are kind of consistent among these books. The first thing that they talk about is you have to find your why. And there's another book by Simon Sinek that talks about identifying your why is probably the most important thing for your business or for yourself. Apple had a certain why and, and um, different companies have a why. What is your why? And I think that goes to a basic level in our, in our, in our emotional deeper side. The why is really important to identify what your business or your person is is all about and it's the the inner drive the inner engine that that uh, energizes and fuels your company like for example our why in our company is based on um, is basically we're a facial plastic surgery specialists that try to think outside the box to get the best results for you and what that's based out of is when I was in LA um, I saw some results that I thought could have been better. Obviously, when you see people in Beverly Hills, they have some results from plastic surgery that are easily identifiable, meaning that you can see that they've had plastic surgery. So that led me to a whole period where I wanted to find out some answers, and that led to my discovery of a theory on beauty. So that kind of explains our why. Like, I went out and found up, out something about beauty, a mathematical answer beauty, to better get results. So we try to think outside of the box to try to get the best results for people. But the number one thing that they mention in this blink list um, thing about some of the seven basic principles that seem to be a common theme in all these self-help books is number one, 
you have to find your why. And people are more successful when they have more intrinsic goals instead of extrinsic goals like money or cars um, or status. If you have more intrinsic goals, you're going to be some more successful. And on a side note, or actually at a, as a side um, benefit, you're going to have more profits and better success in your in your business. And what are those intrinsic goals? Uh, we already identified the ext extrinsic goals as being wealth or cars or bags or watches. Uh, and better, better clothing, etc. But some of the intrinsic goals include being able to direct your life, having more control of what you do, and being your own boss is somewhat a ability to have your direct control. And for finding a job that you're able to be a little bit more of your own boss has been identified as as part of this number one principle. Also, finding meaning in what you do and being better at what you do that you find meaning is really important and also the third part of that is being able to tie this all in to make things better in the world is also part of these uh, intrinsic goals so number one find your why and number two which I've heard before is practice makes perfect now there's a lot of studies out there that show that there's a magic 10,000 hours that will help you succeed in what you do. And for example, Mozart started practicing when he was three years old, and by the time he was an adult, he had like 50,000 hours. So the magic hours is 10,000. Ma Malcolm Gladwell, in his book Outliers, looked into this, and he looked into the Beatles and other, other, other factors and found that 10,000 hours was the magic. So practice makes perfect. Also, related to the second, uh, um, theme through self-help books is that you also should find a mentor. You can't live on an island. I've been told that before and that's something I'm trying to work through and get better at as well. But I think that's something that I can do better is find a better mentor that I can learn from. The third thing is you have to be able to accept failures. Innovation apparently is the uh, it, it is the fruit or the, the, the growth of the seed failures. And I, and I was talking to my family the other day and they talked about fail. What does fail stand for? It, it stands for first attempt in learning or first action in learning. So failures, failures are really important to, to eventually succeed. So there's another book. If you go back to this blink list, type in blink list and search on the internet blink list and the and self help books, you'll probably be able to find this same article and I'll put a link in the bottom of the uh, description so you can you can actually find this but they also say that so instead of concentrating on talent and smarts what you should uh, uh, instead concentrate is learning and improving those are the really keys and and that, and that that's something that my family and, and keep reminding me and telling me that don't concentrate on how pretty or how good-looking your kids are but how hard they're working what kind of effort they're putting into so embracing failure in order to eventually lead to innovation is the third principle. Now the fourth principle is based on focusing. They say, I read this in another article as well, that if you start out your day opening up your email, you will be less productive and the percentages range from five to 30%. And this Blinklist article also talks about the same thing. Make sure you don't start out your day with email because what happens is people grab your attention and you start focusing on other things that might not be important to your main objectives. So sometimes they say that you should, the night before, figure out what are the most important things you wanna do the next day and always finish your most important tasks first. And that's something that I've consciously try to remember as well. And uh, I think that's gonna help me improve too. And so I've touched in, uh, in my Snapchat stories and my other videos that positivity is huge. I learned some of this uh, during the time that I was reading my emotional intelligence books uh, by Daniel Goleman that it's like when you take a test and you have all these negative thoughts like oh my god the I'm going to fail this test the time's running out I'm not gonna have enough time to answer this and you basically concentrate on the negative options 
the result is you're going to have more negative outcomes. So one thing I've learned in the, in the past few years, and this article also talks about this, is that number five, you have to be positive. Positive thoughts leads to positive options that eventually lead to positive outcomes. So stay positive. That's a huge factor. David Schwartz in his book mentions that you got to give yourself or think of a, a pep talk that you can do to yourself. Like every day, say this pep talk and that it's going to give you encouragement and positive thoughts and, and lead to positive options and outcomes. And it kind of reminds me of that, that uh, Saturday, night, Saturday Night Live uh, skit of Stuart Smalley when he gets in front of the mirror and says, I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and gosh darn it, people like me. So anyways, maybe not the Stuart Smalley um, positive talk, but give yourself a, uh, a pep talk or, or write it down and just kind of rehearse it on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't do this yet, but I'm, I should definitely think about trying something like this. So being positive is number five. Now number six is cooperation. They say that you have to cooperate and to get things done. It reminds me of this book that I also read about how most large or very successful companies are find a seed through cooperation for example Bill Gates and Paul Allen and you know different groups so cooperation is huge and they say part of the cooperation or the 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 uh, seeds for success of cooperation actually comes from being more emotionally intelligent and that's something that I've learned over the years is that uh, emotional intelligence is actually more of a predictor of success than your traditional IQ and so I've been studying a little bit about emotional intelligence. I'm not the best at it for sure, but I know that emotional intelligence allows you to work better with people, identify emotions. And so if you're a parent, you know, going through emotional intelligence and teaching your children emotional intelligence is, is going to be a huge factor in their success. So cooperation is huge. So along with cooperation, you want to think about a few things. You want to show respect to people. You know, whoever you work with, they have to, you have to respect them and what they do, you know, obviously as humans. And that's something that I, I can improve on and I think a lot of people can improve on. And you want to play fair, be fair. You don't want to cheat. If you play fair, you might lose, but you're going to win allies and eventually you're going to win in the end. And always make a good impression. You never can have another first impression. So you have to smile. Smiling is huge. Smiling on the phone, smiling when you meet people. One, that reminds me of another thing that, that I think is really important that if you can go through your day and whoever you're talking with, you pretend they have a sign that says, that's, that, that faces you when you're talking to them, you imagine they have the sign that says, I am the most important person in the world right now to you. And if you can do that, which I, I definitely don't do, I, I, I wish I could, but I'm gonna keep trying to practice this, but thinking that the person in front of you is the most important person in the world will definitely help you. Now the seventh tip that they mentioned for, from self-help books that are a general guiding principle that most of the, these books have is you have to, number seven, you have to accept your rationality and learn from it and learn how to avoid it and get better results for yourself. For example, irrationality may be eating chocolate or smoking and they say that if you can think of a negative incentive, like every time you smoke, you think, okay, I'm gonna give $1,000 to Scientology or $1,000 to the person that I just don't like in the world or something, you should try not to have someone you don't like. But if, if you can think of a negative uh, result or incentive that will keep you from doing that irrational thing, uh, that's, a, that's an exercise that you can do to help you lose weight or kick smoking. And uh, that's another principle. Now, related to this, I think that what I've learned is sometimes you have to, you do have to pay attention to the, to the rational side or maybe more the intuitive side. And it may not be related to what I'm talking about or this particular subject, but you have to pay attention to your intuitive side. And that's something that I've tried to, to, to hone in on. It's almost like, it's analogous to when you're like swinging a baseball or a golf club that you can think of the swing in so many different ways. Like I gotta turn my hips and then I gotta get into the to the to the hitting zone. You know, um, there's a special hitting zone that you can get into that uh, allows you to strike the ball better. 
but you can't consciously think of all those things. It has to be a fluid, deep, intuitive, bodily sense to make you swing that club eventually. So they often talk about having like one swing thought when you play golf. Like if you think too many things, it becomes mechanical and you can't hit a fluid shot. And that reminds me of some of the things like in life, like your intuitive side is like that swing in that club. Like the, your intuitive side is all those things that have taught you what you've, you know, all those things that you learned in the past are a deep sense of understanding that you don't consciously come, it doesn't consciously, consciously come up into your mind because you can only literally think about one thing in your mind at a time is what they say. And so your intuitive sense brings all that information in there so that you can better make decisions. So sometimes listening to your intuitive side is really important for, for making good decisions. So anyways, there's a reason why I brought up self-help books and how it's related to plastic surgery because I have these discussions with my patients on just life and aging and improving yourself because plastic surgery is uh, all about improving yourself. So part of that sometimes leads to discussions uh, about self-help books. So let me know what you think about, about these books that I mentioned, especially happiness. I'd love it if you'd read it and you can get back to me on what you think. Uh, out of 16 years of higher education, it's the best book I've ever read. So it brought tears to my eyes. So read that book and tell me what you think. I'd, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks. We would love to have you subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're the Beauty Docs. We're going to be coming up with insightful videos showing you a glimpse into our lives in plastic surgery. Specifically, we're going to show you the human side of what we do. Through that, we hope to enrich your life as these experiences have enriched ours. Click the following annotations to subscribe and be the first to see these unique videos on our YouTube channel. To learn about our theory on beauty that helps us get you the best results, to see a new video showing you the relationship between holidays and heart attacks, or to see a story about plastic surgery and hope in our patient with an autoimmune disease who then developed cancer during our treatment. Again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.